You either know what you want to do or you don't. And if you don't, the more you keep hitting your head against the wall trying to figure that out, it's not going to come to you. And so we're faced with this cold, hard reality that we need to make decisions about our career before we've got any knowledge of how to make them. We know that most people will get the choice wrong in their heart. There's a study by the University of Phoenix that says that over 70% of people under the age of 30 want to change careers. So you're forced to make this decision before you know how to make the decision. And then once you do, you're going to feel like it's wrong. So we're forced to feel like we're failures in this sense. The majority of people come out of school and feel like the choice they made was the wrong choice. So instead of putting so much pressure on the answer to that question, what do you want to do? We need to help students get much more excited about the question. To explore that because it's not about the right platform creating the right life. There is no right platform. You find a platform and then you start to build it and start to adjust it to make it fit your life. So many people feel like I got the answer wrong, now I'm screwed. You're not screwed, you just need to start thinking about it a different way. And so that was the epidemic and it's not just you, it's not just me. It's almost everyone. That idea that you're gonna change careers five or seven times, there's actually no group who studies that. There's no group that says this is a career change and you're gonna do it this many times because nobody can define what a career change is. The best way to think about this is you have one career. You have one journey of work, one life's work. And so the important thing is to figure out how to navigate that one path as opposed to feeling like you're gonna be able to do something for a little while and then jump onto a different track. Because here's the challenge. People come out of school in their career and they feel like they made the wrong choice. And so they feel like they've got one of three options. They can either just keep doing the same thing even though they don't like it. They look at their boss's job, they don't want it. So they can either just keep doing that, climb that ladder, or they can disengage and feel like, this isn't for me, I'm gonna live for my evenings and my weekends. Or the third option is they feel like they can kind of start all over again. But starting all over again becomes very difficult, even though in our brain it makes sense, because a couple years into your career, you actually earn a bit more than when you started. But your life costs a little bit more as well, and so very quickly, you feel like you're stuck on this path. And so we see so many people start to lose satisfaction at work, lose happiness at work, because they feel like, I made the wrong choice, and now there's nothing I can do about it. This is what I'm doing, and it's not ideal, so this is what I want to do, and I can find a way to start to bend my path to do more and more and more of that because I've only got one path. I've only got one journey. So how do I make the most of that one journey? That's the question. But the first question is, what's your dream life? And so many people have a general idea of that. They'll see the success of somebody else and feel like, well, that looks like a dream that must be for me, but they've never put the time in to actually figure out what is the specific life that I'm looking for? What's the specific mix of life and work that I'm looking for. So for me, I'm seeking extreme flexibility through my work. Extreme flexibility so that I can go and do the things that I want to do and still work as I'm doing it. So I'm not running away from my work when I go away to different countries. I'm actually embedding that in my life's work. And so as a result, I needed to get really good at something unique, something so unique that others had value in. And when I did that, it allowed me to be in control. One of the challenges we have with jobs nowadays is that we allow somebody else to own our control of work. We allow somebody else to write down our job description, to define the boundaries of our work. And so as, as a result, we never declare it for ourselves. And it's totally a mistake that people make. You need to be in control of your life's work. You need to be in control of what you do with your productive time. And once you start to own that, once you start to own the path, get good at something, very unique that others have value in. You can start to shape the career and life that you want. It's not just one challenge in the world of work. There's actually four and they're all kind of related to each other. So the first challenge, and depending on where you are in the world, this may not be a big challenge for you, but the first challenge is, can you find work? And the environment that I grew up in, finding work wasn't the hard part. But in lots of the places that I travel to and study work, it is the hard part. So that's the first part. But once you pass that test, once you find your work, the next question is, can you engage in it? Can you give it your heart? Can you give it your head? 
Can you give it your full thought, your full ability? Now, we used to not think that was a big problem. You can't engage, fair enough. We may not promote you. As long as you're not doing bad, we're not gonna fire you, but that's your problem. They're now discovering that it's actually the number one factor in their success. So we're recognizing this is huge. And it actually leads to the third problem. So if the first problem's finding your work, the second problem is engaging that work. The third problem is, can you stay relevant in your work? And I'd say over the next few decades, this will be the biggest conversation at work that humans will have. If you think about how much change has happened over the last few decades and project that forward, it's not slowing down. So if you're 22 years old and you're graduating into a world that's gonna change so drastically and we don't know what those changes are, you need to navigate 40 years of productive time. 40 years of productive time and stay relevant with your skill set. Well, we don't know what changes are coming your way. It's a really hard problem. And even the best experts in the world who are trying to solve this problem, they don't have a good answer because how do we know it's coming? And so given the fact we don't know what's coming, we're faced with the reality that we need to help people engage in their work to be thoughtful about their work as opposed to being thoughtless about their work. Because if they're thoughtful, if they're putting their full brain and energy into their work, they're gonna see changes coming. The changes that we don't know that are around the corner, they're gonna see them coming. And they're gonna be able to navigate themselves through those changes better than if they had their head down and the change just took them out at the knees. And so that idea of being relevant for 40 years when we don't know what changes are coming, that's one of the biggest conversations we're gonna have at work. And then there's a fourth problem. And this fourth problem has been around for a while. We're just starting to recognize how big it is. There was a study that came out that talked about work now being equivalent to the fourth or fifth leading cause of death in North America. The stress of work is now equivalent to the fourth or fifth leading cause of death. So the fourth challenge is, can you stay healthy through your work? If you found it and you engaged in it and you stayed relevant in it, did you stay healthy? Did you build it in a way that allowed your life to manage the stress, to manage the family dynamics, to stay in an environment that love could pick you up, that your kids could be around you, that your relationships work? Did we find a way to do that? And I'd say that that's the fourth piece that is still getting swept under the carpet right now. You have to remember stress is poison. Stress is poison for our bodies. And so if you're in an environment that's constantly in stress, if we haven't found a way to build your life and your work in a way that allows you to put a cap on your stress, you've got literally poison coursing through your veins. So the result of that is huge in your health. It's huge. We organizations, companies, people need to get better attuned to this idea of managing stress through their work. And it comes down to all those concepts we talked about. It's hard to get the choices right. In fact, it's almost impossible to get the choices right. So instead, what you need to get really good at is the adjustments that are gonna be forced into your life because you didn't get it right. When you confront the fact that you're gonna make choices about life that you're gonna get wrong. In fact, you can't get all of them right. There's just way too much data, there's way too much to sort through to get all the answers right. Then it comes down to a few things. Number one, are you self-aware enough to recognize the path I'm on isn't working? It's so important. And then are you self-aware enough to know what's a better path for you, for your life? Not for somebody else's life, but for your true success. Are you gonna be able to know that? And then, once you can do those two things, recognize the path isn't working and recognize the path that you should be on. Can you actually change the trajectory of your life? Can you change the way you show up? Can you change your behaviors to actually now line up with the outcome you're seeking? So those things, self-awareness and leadership are so fundamental to a world that's moving so fast because we're gonna get it wrong. So you need to lead your own life when the path isn't working. Hey everyone, this is Tyler Way and thanks so much for listening to this video collaboration with Motivation to Study. If you'd like a free copy of my game-changing book, I went to school that long for this, here's how you get it. 
everyone that subscribes to my YouTube channel and then clicks the link in the description of this video will be able to download it for free. Thanks, and I hope to see you over on my channel soon.